Uh, hello and welcome. Thanks for joining us. Another edition of Triple M Footy's Midweek Rub on this Wednesday afternoon. As always, I welcome Dale Thomas, Damien Barrett, Wayne Carey. Never a dull moment in footy, Damo. No, there's not, Joey, but headbutts on field uh, at around 12 and, and brawls between teammates off it. We'll get to all of that in the next uh, few moments. We, we will indeed. But uh, before we get into the footy news in the AFL, Dale Thomas, big story to come big out story. of the weekend. Dan at nil. Yes. You got the boys over the line for their first win in 1,029 days. You go down there. You make the difference. They win by two points against the Southern Mallee Giants. And you are now you're getting a statue uh, in the town of Nil? Or? I'm not sure about an official statue. I'm sure there's something in the works down there. Look, unbelievable day. Obviously, it was for Carlton Draft. A great initiative to give back to country towns and country football that have been decimated by the pandemic. So... Neil, as you said, hadn't won for over a thousand days. I waltzed into town and sorted that out in about two and a half hours. So <laughs> it wasn't the best day for footy, Joey. I wore the long sleeves. It was a bit of rain, a lot of wind. Uh, we didn't score in the last quarter, but we held on for dear life. And the scenes afterward were unbelievable. Seeing some of the scenes, it's fantastic. I, that, I love, I love the concept. I mean, mm. the fact that it brings a bit of excitement, raise some money for the particular footy club. You get a win. Uh, isn't Horsham, isn't that uh, Timmy Watson? I know the sh- Shoals are from uh, Horsham. Isn't Neil right near Horsham? Yeah, about uh, 100 k's away. So not, oh, well, not that close, not but that close not then. that far in, uh, in terms of country. <laughs> but I, I saw them all duck when I drove the five and a half hours from Melbourne, believe you me. But it, it was it was absolutely unbelievable. Got split open at some stage. So came off. It was like Braveheart. Had a half a face full of blood. Left it there for a bit. <laughs> strutted to the crowd. Everyone got involved. So it was... Um, no, it was actually huge, and I played on ball. I thought I might have played forward, and they didn't waste me there because there was not a lot of ball coming down. So I played on ball. I tried my guts out, yeah. and I am so bloody sore Are still. You? So I reckon in about a month's time, I'll be good to go again. How many posies? Uh, I reckon I would have been somewhere around 30. I started like a house on fire. I had 10 and a hanger in the first quarter and slowly <laughs> ran out of path. The petrol tickets were used pretty quickly. So you're retiring hurt now? Uh I'm not officially retiring. Gun for hire, I'd say. So Still. I've um, my manager's been in touch. Apparently, if Essendon make a final, they want me to break their drought for winning a final. <laughs> and uh, I'm expecting a call from the Kangaroos any day. <laughs> you, you might just get that hey, game. I'm, I'm not joking. You would get a game. <laughs> yeah. I reckon you well, would. West Coast as well. They're bloody little twerps at the minute, aren't I they? I am just concerned about you, though. The two games you've played, you've got the concussion where you had, the, you yeah, had a week where right. you were struggling to see yeah. and you've split your head open. Can you just maybe keep your head out of the hole when you're playing local footy? <laughs> yeah, well... Uh, this was my fault this time. I went flying through a stoppage. It was on our goal line. I thought I might be able to shark the ruck, the ruck hit. I got it right, but I was about two steps too slow. So I definitely lost a yard, and then I just couldn't get out of the road of the bloke who was coming. So I ran into his elbow. It was fine. I, uh, yeah, all, all was good. But, yes, you're right. I don't need any more head knocks because there's not many brain cells left. Uh, well done. Very good. Hey, the other news to come out before we get into the big footy news, Demo, was the descent rule ah, that got yes. finally <laughs> got scrapped. You Dave, two drove this. You two drove this. So we bloody should. It's about time the AFL listen to us, Joey. We had a five-minute argument, I think, about four weeks ago yep. on this disc- uh, this topic. Let's actually just take a listen to some audio. <laughs> oh. from that. They know what's right. They know what's wrong. So if they do it, don't get up in arms. Don't bag the umpires. Don't bag the AFL. Bag the dingbat player to put his arm out. If you played table tennis against me and you beat me or there was a bad decision, your natural reaction is to like throw a hand up. Oh, no, I'm disappointed in myself. If that's taken as dissent and that costs you a game. I think it's very, very hard and unreasonable and unfair on players in the heat of the moment in an emotional sport to not react. Duck, anything you'd like to say today? Anything you'd like to say? Well, I'm, I'm glad. It's... <laughs> I'm glad it's obviously uh, morphed into what it's morphed into. But I tell you what, Joey, mark my words. So (laughs) make sure we're recording. (laughs) Mark my words. There will be one because there will be an umpire that takes it, a a small little incident as – as descent, and we will be we will be in the same. We'll be we'll be up in arms because ironically, it is still on the on the ump the particular umpire that is in charge to pay it, and there will be an umpire at some stage that will feel like he's been. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so is that the treated. apology and I got it wrong? Is that, is, that, is that what I'm reading in no, between because, that? No, because at the time no. I was backing up what Brad Scott was trying to say. Yes. Right. But now they've obviously moved the goalposts. So now yes. what I'm saying is I was now wrong. That they've moved, now <laughs> that they've moved the, no, because no, Brad Scott was wrong. <laughs> now that we've moved the goalposts back to here. Yes. Mark, look, once again, Mark your words. we will, we will have, we're, we're going to have a particular time. 
and we're going to all be sitting here saying, how was that paid? And they've lost a game because of it. We you might, watch. Right, we might just have to take that day. <laughs> that might be as good as we get from that. <laughs> so we're not getting I was <laughs> no, wrong? No. It. no, no was we're I not. wrong? No. <laughs> you said the players just don't do it. You said it would be easy said, for play, to, yeah, not, to don't put your arms out. And Daisy and I because said we thought that was unrealistic. Paying, no, because if they kept paying them and yeah. they were consistent in paying them every time, then the players would have stopped doing no, they it They wouldn't. They couldn't. That's why they've changed the rules because they couldn't change it. They couldn't get that out Damo, are you going to officiate? Was that an official apology? No, I'm with Doug. Duck and I have had a lot of blues on this show and over many years on this particular uh, radio station, but I'm with Duck on this one. Thank so you, Damo. Should, <laughs> should we go Melbourne Two. and take it out the front? No. <laughs> oh, well, good segue, Shirts Daisy. Off. Good segue because we're going to take a break and we'll get to that straight after this with Damo's news. We're going to take a look at the Stephen May Melksham I'm on bout Duck. at Entrecote. That's up next on Triple M Footy's Midweek Rub. This is Triple M Footy's Midweek Rub. It's Damo. Time for the news. And we must start with the Stephen May, Jake Melksham fallout from their little dust up the other night. Yep. And look, this is a, it's a moving story. And, and, and we're talking about it right now around about midday on the, the Wednesday of this particular week. I say it's moving because in the past 90 minutes, it's been revealed by the club itself that Jake Melksham has had to have surgery for an infection on the hand that he used to belt Stephen May on the weekend incident at uh, Entrecot. Um, just to, to snapshot it before we delve it into it in a, in a footy club sense and what it means. Um, May under concussion protocols for a, for some uh, for a head knock from two weeks ago. The Fremantle game first quarter missed last weekend's game against the uh, Sydney Swans was still effectively under those protocols when he was drinking when he shouldn't have been. Club policy, AFL policy, uh, got himself into the uh, the argument with Jake Melksham. That crescendoed out onto the streets out uh, in Greville Street at the front of uh, Entrecote where it, uh, it became very public with the, the brawl that went on and Stephen May has been suspended now by the football club to miss the uh, the Queen's birthday Monday game. That's the news of it as we speak. The effect it has on the dynamic of the Melbourne Footy Club trying to defend a premiership and the, the workings within the locker room. I'll leave that part of this conversation to... Uh, to the experts. Well, you don't want the distractions at any time, especially after you've lost your first two in a row for a very long time. Look, as far as you've done the wrong thing, well done to Melbourne for the suspension for going against the protocols. Jake the Snake, he's obviously smacked him in the mouth, Duck. That's how you get the infection in the hand. Is it that big of a deal that everyone's making it out to be? I don't think so. I think, Joey, you've probably had teammates who used to antagonise each other. and It's pretty significant, Daisy. It, I'm not saying that it's not significant, but it's probably not as uncommon as you would think. Oh, no, I'm not saying that either. I, mean, I agree with that part of it. But for this to be played out in, a public, I think that, in the Greville the Street part of a, Melbourne. A public forum. And, yeah. and look, and so I agree with you, Daisy. I think this sort of stuff does occur a lot more than what you think. Now, the fact that it's at a, at a, at a nice classy restaurant in Entrecote and Greville Street there, it's probably, that's, that's not the, that's part of the story. That's part of the story. That's not ideal. And there's been some, steaks. there's been some damage to the, to the restaurant. So, so they're all the things, the protocol, obviously that Steve May broke there, the, these are the important things that have to be ticked off on that. And I'm, I'm led to believe that the restaurant hasn't been contacted or. Ha- they again, have, that or they has have, now moved as well. They, they, they have been contacted have been, and apologized to. Okay. And, and as far as we can tell, accepting of that apology. So that's great. Yep. So if there was anything, yep. you know, damaged or whatever, but in terms of the two uh, players at, at question, I, I, I don't think, and I agree with you, Daisy, I don't think that it's as big a deal as what you think in terms of upsetting the team, because if these two, and, and, and let's be honest, if Maisie's one of those guys that likes to be a little bit uh, like that with his teammates, people understand that. Um, well, well, Duck, on that aspect of it, he, he's now got a timeline of, of teammates belting him. Campbell I mean, Brown. Campbell Brown. Yeah. And there were other um, fractious moments at the Gold Coast Suns. Tom Lynch and he would go at it quite regularly. Yeah. Richard Tally pulled him well, up on the We all know there occasion. are some blokes that when they drink, you know, get yeah. you know, get a bit more so, so, so that's slippy or aggressive. Twice two clubs to be no. belted. Yeah. I mean, that's that's getting the, serious. And by the sounds of it, and I listened to and I listened to Maisie uh, and his apology on the news. I don't know what where I saw it, but I, I just saw it. You know what? It was genuine. He clearly knows that he's made a mistake here. It's, it's spilled out. They've had a they've had a they've had a scuffle. Like I said. I don't, this doesn't derail Melbourne. In actual fact, I think it does, and it can do the complete opposite of that. I think it can galvanise this group and have a real steely resolve. I wouldn't want to be playing. I know Maisie's not going to be playing now, on, on and neither will be Jakey uh, on Monday. But I, I, I'd be, I'd be saying I'm, I'm right behind Melbourne. You watch how they come out and play. I they, reckon there'll be a real well, steely again, resolve. Again, again, if they lose the game of footy because they, they didn't have mate, that becomes a bigger issue. Joey, just to, to Duck's point of it happening a fair bit, if it wasn't public, if, or if it wasn't the restaurant, and somehow they were able to ascertain no one was going to find out about it apart from the eight or nine guys that were there. 
would Stephen May be missing this week? Would they be dealing with it? Would, would they be going public with the sanctions that they have clearly been forced to make on Stephen May as a result of it going public? Oh, no, I'd like to think if the club found out that he had been out drinking, on the, they still would have punished him. It wasn't because it was public. I think the club... Uh, or would they have the, just said the, the continuation of the I concussion protocols? Have, I mean, would I they have know. said we're, we're dropping yeah, him because he's got in a scuffle? I, I don't know how he had I, it, but, I doubt they would. Yeah, but, back, but that's in, point. in terms of the leadership, though, if, if, if the leadership group has put this week sanction on him, then why, when they were sitting there drinking with him at the restaurant, why weren't they saying to him then, that, mate, you shouldn't be drinking? That's that's the part that that's the leadership part that you say. Well, were there players? Were those players saying, "Maisie, you shouldn't be drinking. You're under the protocols," and and is that what upset? So there, that's the that's the little bit of a concern for me because if there are any leaders there or anyone for that matter, they should have been pulling him up and saying, "Go home. You shouldn't be you shouldn't be doing yeah, this." Yeah, they should have, and they did. And I think they all agree they've all done the wrong thing. So the players are not pulling up Stephen May, him involvement, drinking, and and being out, and and then Jake Melksham obviously throwing punches. But I agree with Duck and Daisy internally. It's not as big an issue as what we make. They they will move on. That sounds like they already have. If anything, they'll bunker down. Well, they'll they'll the realise they've, the they've been humbled a little yep. bit, or you know, yeah. they'll, they'll bunker down as a group. They'll 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 tighten up and and they'll sort of go about their work, head down, bum up, sort of cliche, so to speak, for a while. And and I think it won't affect their season at all. It's no. highly embarrassing, though, at the, at the very least. And I, and I, I take on board everything you're saying, and, and and I know what you're saying and referring to how it does go on more than we get to find out, but. For it to play out as publicly as it has, with, with the same character who had the same thing happen to him at a previous footy club, th- these are pretty this serious. This day and moments. age, it, it's embarrassing because this day and age, I mean, uh, look, fighting's never been cool, and 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 in particular these days. It's less I mean, and less when I was a kid yeah. growing up in the country, that's what kids did. I'm not condoning it, but that's what you did in the country. You grew, we grew up in that era. You just don't do that now. I mean, you talk, you talk through it. You say, mate, you know, it doesn't matter what someone says. It sticks and stones, you know, all of that. And you walk away. It takes more to walk away than it does to actually yeah, go out. So the, so the fact that you've, they, they actually went out the front and, and, and had an altercation out the front, that's, that is, that that's is the concerning. We're learning more that about, is yep. the concerning part oh, because, you know, you just, at the end of the day, you just turn the, turn the other cheek. Yep. yep. Uh, we can bounce around Tassie the whole the latest there? argument and the debate and, and push to have a 19th licence is is on a I feel a, a bit of a knife's edge right. component to it right now it's gone from being a, a long shot to being nicely positioned to it was almost a, a fait accompli mm. yeah at the start of the season and now we've got some um, unfortunate situations politically The it's not as far as I can gather being unilaterally laterally supported by all um political movers down there. So there's that aspect of it. Um, there's a lot of uh, comments and a lot of conversations now between the the heads of the the clubs, the, the incumbent clubs, about what it means for them. And they're obviously dealing with it from their own personal perspectives, but also as a collective, because we've just recently just come out of the the effect that the introduction of the expansion clubs had on the drafting of and, and draining of talent pools for, for so long already. We're effectively emerging out of that now, and, and here we are about to go again. So all this is going to reach a crescendo in, in August when it's put to the clubs and I think it's line ball. Can I ask you a question? Is it fair for club presidents to be thinking about their own club's position first or should they be thinking about the greater good of the competition? Yep. What what should their first their first point you know of what, call Joey, be? Their first point of call is their own club. Is that, yeah, that, okay. That's what they're there for. Yep. They're, they're appointed by a group of supporters effectively and the board chooses the president or the chairperson and they are there to serve that club. Now, there is a component of the greater good, no doubt. Yeah. But I would argue that a lot of these people, and some of them has been there from the expansion clubs of 2011 and 12, felt, well, we gave the greater good look at it then. And it affected us. We're, we've been badly affected by it, historically badly affected by it. So these are all conversations, Joey. It's a, it's a great question, but ultimately... They they are there to serve yeah. their club. Exactly. Haven't we haven't we already learned? And I'm, I'm look. I, I would love Tassie to have a team. I, I think they're a great state that love their footy, and so many great Tasmanians have, have come into the game and, and been fantastic for it. Uh, but in saying that, haven't we learned that expansion clubs, the Gold Coast and GWS, you don't just you don't just set them up and throw all your resources at them and they work. We've, we know that. I yeah. mean, GWS have been successful. nearly success. worked at GWS, didn't yeah, they? No, they're, no, very they're, nearly they're, worked. They're a successful yeah. club. Yeah. They're a successful club. You're playing yeah. in grand finals and prelims and, and other finals. You're, you're, you're successful. So, but, but, but it's a, a lack of, of access of to those work. players. And all of those of players the... that could have gone to, you know, sprinkled through other clubs. And the clubs that finished at the bottom at that time didn't get the picks that they, they deserve for finishing at the bottom. All of those things. Gold Coast now, finally, after all, you know, we're starting to see some 
a light at the end of the tunnel finally. Um, but, you know, it's a lot of, you know, they don't just come into the competition and, and, and flick the switch and become successful. Are the AFL starting to realise that the talent pool that we think is so great and so deep probably isn't as deep as we once thought in terms of, you know, we, we see so many players on lists, but then North Melbourne have been down the bottom for a while now. The steep fall off from West Coast as well. The Gold Coast Suns not being able to generate and uh, blood kids that came through really quickly from the, you know, the lower part of your yep. system. Is that a, part a scary yeah. part of it? Yeah. And, and, and what is happening at the community and, and absolute grassroots level out of COVID is, is of a major concern, which you then need to project forward at all levels of it and, and at all states of it. So inclusive of Tasmania and how that looks. Um, really good footy story uh, to, to emerge during the week when Caleb Marchbank was announced as returning for, for this Friday's game for Carlton against this. And then a former teammate, of, of yours, Daisy, and someone who has done it really hard. It, it's going to be about three years since yep. he was last seen on a senior AFL uh, ground um, for, for reasons that relate to serious knee problems. Knee problem, broken neck as well along that journey as well, playing as uh, for Carlton. So fantastic to see. Anytime you have someone who's out of the game for whatever it be, illness, health reasons or injury, to see them persist and get back. You just wish them all the very best. Mm. And it could not have come at a better time for the Blues as well. Obviously, Wiedering being out, he's a big uh, defender down there. He uses the ball really well. He reads the game fantastically. He will be just exactly what they need. And I wish him all the very best. And hopefully, a bit like Charlie Kerno, he can get a nice clear run at it because his upside is massive. And just last one, Damo, quickly on Kevin Sheedy, um, dredging up the old comment about the AFL should apologise oh. to Essendon. Well, What's I your take on that? Nearly fell off the chair with that one, and that was what a company made uh, a couple of days ago. And then yesterday made the, the comment about uh, why Trent Cotchin and Sam Mitchell shouldn't have accepted the Brownlow that was given to them as a result of Joe Watson losing it. I, I don't know why he's done it. I know there's a diversionary component to Kevin Sheedy's work, Dark, and it's been very successful exactly. over a long time. But to, to bring these issues up, th this scandal up on the week going into the 150th. It's a 150th anniversary. They're, they're playing against one of their great rivals. I mean, and to be looking in the rear view mirror mm. and talking about that, and I... I, I, I it can't be just a deflection, but I, I, a there's guy, no other logic. A to guy it. in footy, I think Kevin Sheedy has done more for our game than just about anyone. He's been one of the greatest promoters of our game, and th the reason for that is because he's always looked forward. But mm. he's actually looking in the rear view mirror now. I'm, I'm as surprised as anyone to hear those comments. Yeah. I mean, to, to ask for an apology. I mean, you've this club. This club has has a massive scar sitting there from well, that. It, it is it is healed the it competition. Is, it and is itself. healed over. It is that scar is it, it should be healed over, and they should be moving on, looking forward, not back at what at what has occurred that long ago. The great administrator at Collingwood, Jeff Walsh, always said, "Duck the windscreen's bigger than the rearview mirror. Keep looking forward. Don't Correct. look back." On that Correct. note, that's very very profound. Well, pre very profound, <laughs> Daisy. Very good. Hey, uh, we'll take a break. Up next. We're going to have the Daisy Duck Dive Quick Five. This is Triple M Footy's Midweek Rub. All right, Daisy Duck, no sitting on the fence here. I want your most honest answers. First question, with the way the competition is right now, and it's very, very even, mm. I want to know, as of right now, if you had to predict who are the four teams that will Ooh. be playing in prelim finals, in no particular order, who are the four that are in the prelim right now? Cats, Melbourne, Frio. Cats, Melbourne, Frio, Brisbane. I'm going to go with D's, Brisbane, Frio, Blues. Right. Very interesting. Damo. So you've got the Blues in. And not Cats out. Cats. And the Cats yours. out. Yep. So no one's got St Kilda in a prelim at the moment. No. Okay. No. Uh, Damo, right now, would you take to win the premiership, Melbourne or the rest of the field? The rest of the field. The rest Ooh. of the field. Yeah. Not well, Is that just on like probability in sort of your, <laughs> yes. no, your, your I, nerd brain and chances? Well, while I've admired this seventeen win streak they had and love what they did last year, I, I've never, oh. I, I wasn't an early buyer in it into it being a Fate dynasty complete. club. Mm. Yeah, so uh, good one. What, know, about, what, cool. what about that? So Melbourne oh, or the field? I, I, if you, I you're, you're yeah, hunting, if it's even money, the Melbourne or the field? I take taking? the D's. Still you take still the, take the D's. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, I'd still take the D's. I probably would too for what it's worth, but it's not it's my a good segment. Question. I'm just asking. Thank you, Dame. Yeah. I'm just asking the questions. Hey, interesting. The Sydney Swans have won six of their last seven games without Buddy Franklin, and we've seen what Logan McDonald can do without Franklin in the side. This may be controversial, but are the Swans a better team without Buddy oh. in it? They're not, to answer the question. Although, you never say but, because then that, that takes away what you said before. So they're not a better team. <laughs> Although, that's, <laughs> that's Wayne's that's wise words again. I like it. Although, psychologist yes. once told me that, never say but. But anyway, 
Um, they, however, they use, so, however, so that, it's when it's I'm sorry, how, but how, how, <laughs> I could be sorry, although yeah. no, he's however, never said that. Yeah. However, yes. um, they use the right option when he's not there. So sometimes a wise coach once said to me, your greatest strength can also be your greatest weakness. So they do go to him at times when they shouldn't go to him when he's playing because he's such a big presence. And on the weekend, like Reed, Reed was the best man for the Swans for me. Um, and and uh, McDonald was uh, not far behind. He played a, such a good game. But because they, they went to those guys on the right occasions. So, you know, when Buddy's there, they don't do that. Um, do you, would would too, you still Dad? prefer him to be in the team? Of course you would. It's also too because it, th- those two guys w- will have it kicked to them and, and compete for the mark. Now, Buddy doesn't historically, because of his shoulders, but he's not a great necessarily mark. bring it to ground no, no. as well as those other two do. Is no, that part no, no. of what you're and, saying? And, as well? and maybe, and maybe Buddy and I've and I've said this, like Horse, having seen what he saw on the weekend against you know, albeit without you know, May. Lever Lever wasn't uh, in his best form either, and May was obviously out, but. It, it sort of maybe it's time for Buddy to move up a bit like Richo did in his last year, move up the ground a little bit more, and it, you can always float in. So he's still going to kick his goals, but he's such a good ball. A bit more Jeremy uh, Jeremy Cameron like. A bit more Jeremy Cameron like, but but get up, get up, and get some ball up around the centre of the ground, and then use it because he is a very good yeah, user. Like, like he did in the 2013 the Grand Final. Mm. That was, that was a role he had yeah, to, yeah. to take McFarlane out. Um, so I, you know, they, they, they've got options. You know, you certainly don't have to come and park him uh, inside the forward 50. I think they're still a better team with him in there, albeit, however, and or including <laughs> the fact now that they know they have confidence and other avenues to goals when he's not there. It's so not a concern now. If he, if he goes down yep. at some stage coming into a final, they now know how to play. And as you just spoke about, now the other option too of, well, if it's not going well with him bare in the square... You can get him up the ground and get him involved otherwise. Does Reed come out? That's what I was going to ask. Do they yeah. keep playing oh. McDonald, Reed, and Reed. Franklin? I don't think you can play all of them at once. Yeah, I, I 100% do. But but Buddy you has think, to come up the ground. You think yeah. you can play them all at once? Yep, Buddy has okay. to come up the ground, though. Does so Reed have the capabilities, if that isn't happening, to go into the ruck? Is that where you're yes, Yeah, Reed, Reed yeah. can play multiple different roles okay. as well. But the thing about Reed is, unfortunately for Reedy, and, and like his brother as well, his body's let him down. So if he gets a clean, I, I think he's that... He's that one X factor sort of player, even at, at, at his of stage of his card. career. He's a wild card yeah. player that if if he's if he's going okay and his body's good, he could be the difference between how far they can go. A guy like Reed. Staying on that Sydney Melbourne game, is it now confirmed to you two that Stephen May is Melbourne's most important player, or after seeing what Max Gorn did in that game, that Max Gorn is their most important? I'm going to say yes. I think Stephen May is still their most important player. And the way he plays across the halfback, he's the general. He sets him up, but he also takes the kick-ins. That's another thing that uh, he's probably lost a little bit when you've got little Bowie down there kicking in. Doesn't kick it as far, doesn't penetrate as much. And then obviously you take away him being at the ground level of the next contest. I think he is not taking away and or discouraging the fact that Max Gorn's a good player. Played one of the great games. It didn't was, he? wasn't it? It was yeah, amazing. He played a, a, an awesome game. Real captain's game, unfortunately. Do you think win. May's... If the one most of those, important? I still, yeah, I do. Yep. Yeah. What about the, the cats? We just thought of Jeremy Cameron. Right now, the seasons that they're both having, who's more important to Geelong? Who can't they least afford having that side? Tom Hawkins or Jeremy Cameron? If they're trying to win this flag, that we know they Tom they're so desperate to win for me. Still, Tom Hawkins. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, can I say either or? I think no. You've got to pick oh, one. That's the Daisy like Duck Dive segment. You can say Cam- uh, Cameron. However, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not but. Um, <laughs> the fact is that it's one of them gets you. Each it works. Week. Works. Yeah. It's, it's working so the well. They, very rarely have they both kicked bags on one weekend. Cameron will get a hold of you one week, then Tom Hawk the next week. So. I would say arguably Cameron. I'll throw that question back to you, Joe. Are you going to have Ooh. Cameron or Hawkins or Stewart as the most important? Oh, Stewart. Yeah, well, I'd say Stewart in that conversation, Damon. No, I? I still think defensive systems can hold up. I just don't think they had enough time last year. I think Tom, they need Tom Hawkins to win a flag. If it was yep. Cameron or Hawkins, they've been very good with just Tom Hawkins. Cameron's added an, obviously an extra layer, but I think Hawkins is still. Take into account important. what Hawkins does with the boundary throw-ins yep. and who he brings into the game. He, he's. He's in career best, I reckon, the last his last four years have been unbelievable. Damo, you were there Friday night. Who do you think? If you had to have Cameron, Stewart, or Hawkins? I'd take Stewart. Oh, yeah. Because they were okay. gone for two and a half quarters without him. He went down and yeah. they leaked him. Mm. Mm. Hey, and, um, and got blown away in the finals last year without him too. 
Brody Grundy at Collingwood. I was just thinking about that. Brody Grundy at Collingwood. Should they we can consider? Cut that pause. No, we cut that Joey pause was taking notes for another show. <laughs> 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 I was a mental <laughs> click. Yeah, here, bring that up. Yeah. Was, Brody yeah. Grundy. I had Grundy Siri written here. And I, was, I had Grundy written. I was thinking what I was going to ask. Would you? Should Collingwood consider trading Brody Grundy to continue to develop their list to climb back up the ladder? Who would? Who the, pro, the problem is where Brody's at at the moment, and it's been a couple of years now since he's uh, been since he signed since his best form. Since his best form. So if he leaves, don't Collingwood have to pay the the difference between his wage? So they have to be negotiated. Yeah, be negotiated. That'd be all part of the draft picks. And 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 they probably can't afford to because they're still playing Trelaws as well at the Bulldogs. Brody, Brody's not going. No, there's there's no other club. I don't. There's no other club in the competition that are going to pay that sort of money for for Brody. Club in the Premiership window. His value. Brody's value, and I think he'll admit this. I think his value is not where it was when he signed that contract. Nowhere near. Daisy? Uh, I don't think they worry about looking for a suitor as well. I think they just cop what they've got. I think he's still got upside. He's not playing at his best, but as that team continues to improve, which they are, I think he'll get back to playing better football. It's a lot easier to play good in a better side as well. Brody's got a, for, for me, and I and I really like Brody, and I think he, he had three or four years where he was as good as anyone, along with Max Gorn, the best ruckman in the competition. But I think he's got away from being playing like a ruckman. Yeah. He's got to play, like, look at Max Gorn and say, I'm the arguably nearly the biggest player on the ground. So I play a kick behind. I, I actually hit the ball to my on ballers. I don't need to follow it up. I don't need to get possessions myself in that situation, but hit it to my, my midfielders that then can run away and burst away with the footy and push forward and take a couple of clunks and, and, and hit the scoreboard. So play like a ruckman. Yep. I agree. They don't, they don't I, yep. need another on baller. Yep. They I, need a ruckman. It's a good point. I think he's still got upside. He had to adjust to the new system. He got used to getting those short 45s and those little yeah. kicks and marks mm. that, that Collingwood played. And that he's got to be down he's, the line. Now he's got to be getting down the line behind the ball and playing big. Correct. And, and he can still have a huge influence. He's Correct. still a very good player. Yep. Last one, Daisy, you wanted to touch on the West Coast Eagles. Well, I, I'll, I think I asked this about four weeks ago, three weeks ago. Are we letting them off the hook? But how bad are they? They are... They are, I will say it, they're the worst team in the competition by far. By far at worse the moment. Worse than North Melbourne. Worse than North Melbourne. With North Melbourne, again, we spoke about this, the excuses and reasons, and we let West Coast off at the start because they actually had reasons rather than excuses. COVID, injuries, decimated, no worries. North Melbourne don't have the list that West Coast have. The effort and the output that West Coast are bringing week in, week out is insipid. It is not good enough. It is not good enough for the level. At least North Melbourne, yes, they get beaten comprehensively most weeks and some weeks. Against Melbourne, they tried their guts out. They were competitive. You could see the effort. I don't see that. And it's not just because I declared them on the weekend, but I watched that first quarter against Adelaide, flicked it off. It was game over at quarter time, mm. five goals to zip. It's it's incredible how talent. slippery they've fallen yep. off the face of the earth. They have enough talent still in that team to be doing a lot better than what they are. They are the slowest team that we've seen at AFL level for a long, long time. I looked at that game as well, and I, Jamie Cripps is the only player with leg speed. They are just slow. So I think we look at it and we think, are they trying? Are they? I just genuinely think they can't cover the ground. It's becoming a real issue, and it's something that Adam Simpson is going to have to address over the offseason. I think they've accepted their fate a little bit too. I think yeah, – no a damning not, thing to say about a yeah. footy club. And that's not saying yeah. you're not trying because there's trying, but as we know, there's levels of trying. And 1% or 2% when you're not giving your absolute all, that's a 10-goal loss to start with. Uh, very good. Well done, boys. Good segment. Hey, we'll take a break. We'll have a look at the action coming up from round 13 and just take a look back at a couple of our tips from last week on Triple M Footy's Midweek Rub. And let's just take a look back at last week because a couple of big games, we had some differing views. Let's just start with uh, how we went tipping the Geelong v Western Bulldogs game. I've long had the view that if you're going to win a flag in any given year, you need to make a statement. I still think Geelong is in that conversation. I think this will be their statement game and that they will beat the Western Bulldogs. And I'm going to declare, Joey, my certainty of the round. I'll be tipping the Cats in that one. I'm going to tip Geelong as well. Yeah, I'm going to go against you. (laughs) 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 Uh, Well done, Damo. It was a statement game. I was pretty impressed with their injuries. This has been cut up. That was cut up, surely. Nope. No, nope. well, no, no. <laughs> no, I remember. Don't worry. Hey, Damo, what uh, goes around comes around. What oh, about Fremantle Brisbane? How do we tip this one? And I also think uh, Fremantle will beat Brisbane. I'm yeah. going to tip Brisbane in, in that one. Well, I'm tipping Fremantle as well, for what it's worth. <laughs> I'm going to also tip Fremantle. Oh, I'm on my own there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and made it look silly. Yeah, there you go. Brisbane, a bit disappointing. Just got yeah. some slight concerns with how they're defending at the moment. So, 
Very interesting. Hey, let's quickly whip through the six games this weekend. Just on so, that, Lockie yeah. Neal, did you hear him speak yep. uh, the other night? Yep. He, incredibly well. Just yep. took ownership, said, you know what, I, I, I didn't play well. I did this wrong, that wrong. Spoke about that defensive attitude that you spoke about. I mean, they've they've got some serious like leaders at that footy club. I, I, I'm not concerned about Brisbane. I think they can come out of that. Yeah. Hey, Thursday night footy's back, which I think we're all glad to see. Richmond, Port Adelaide, MCG. How do we see this one? I'm uh, Port Adelaide, uh, uh, wild outsiders, if you can believe that, in sort of the head-to-head markets. I'm going to tip Port Adelaide. Um, I think they get it done on Thursday night footy. They need to stay in touch. If they lose this one, it's starting to get uh, slippery again. They'll be two or three games outside the eight. Richmond, obviously, only a game outside the eight at the minute. So If they lose this one, they're level with Port. On points, aren't they? Port go up level with them. If Port Adelaide beat Richmond, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they'll, they'll so both they be in game outside level. the eight. Yeah. It's a massive game. I mean, if Port lose, you got to, you can put a line through them. Clearly, if Richmond lose, well, yeah, there's still a small chance. But if they lose, not a not a big chance. I think that this is huge for both clubs. So you presume Port? You said Port will make finals. So you're tipping Port Adelaide in this no, game? No, I, <laughs> I, I'm a I'm a believer in what Richmond have done over the last four weeks. I know that they. So they had the bye last week, didn't they? They got beaten by Sydney the week before because of a poor they second half. They won four half. in a row before that. Yep. You know what? I am. I'm big. The fact that I the fact that I went with Port Adelaide and said they can they can make a run home, then I've probably got to stick with that and say that Port will beat Richmond. There you go. <laughs> I'm confused, um, uh, but I'm, I'm so going to tip uh, confidently Richmond in uh, in this particular game. Oh, I'm very very bullish on Richmond, not just for this yep. game, but for the run home for yep. the rest of the season. I'm with you on that. Uh, Essendon v Carlton. This is a always a big blockbuster. I do have the right to change that in the age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can. You can do whatever you like in the age. Essendon Carlton. Uh, that we continue. Expect the Blues to continue on. I do. Yes. Yep. Um, Can't see why they wouldn't. Yeah. yeah. Again, Essendon. They're going to be up and about a big occasion. Mate. Unless they've turned something around TV. in that midweek buy, and a bit like St Kilda last year, they went in, they had the big discussions, they changed a few things, they tweaked a few things. That's the great unknown. I'm going on all things equal, and that being a Carlton victory. Never underestimate the power of having, you know, Tim Watson and TD and Simon Madden and I think Michael Long's coming back. Michael to Long for it. and Vanderhaar and Joe all Watson there. all there, and probably just poking their head into the rooms and. That will give them a lift. I, this is going to be a this is going to be a fascinating game. On form, you you say obviously clearly Carlton on form, but don't be surprised because yeah. because of that because of that feeling. This is a this is an unbelievably powerful great club that is that has been really not for poor, twenty years. Though. That has been really poor this year. They played finals last year. They haven't won a final in a long time. I know that, and and the power of having those legends back there sticking their head in and out. Uh, before that game, don't don't underestimate that. So, so are you tipping, tipping then? No, I, I said I'm going to go with Carlton, but don't be don't underestimate that power. They could cause an upset. It's a good game. That's a good point. Footy is an emotional game. Uh, Who don't yeah, that's right. yeah. Carlton. Just quickly, Fremantle. Um, what do we expect? What do you want to see from Fife? What what will be enough to see from Fife? Thirty and three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, I, I I think if he uh, like like any sort of forward, I think if he had fourteen and kicked a couple, you'd be pretty happy. Yep. A hey, Brisbane St Kilda. This is a big one, as we said. Brisbane coming off the loss to Perth, or to Fremantle, coming back from Perth. Saints off the bye. Two teams looking for a spot in the top four. This is a big one. Who who you think's the better team if they're coming into this game this weekend? I think I'm going to tip Brisbane again. It's it's wildly one sided uh, in the markets, which I know reading to that what you will, but usually a decent enough guy. I think St Kilda are right in this one. I just think Brisbane. Be disappointed with what they served up on the weekend. They come back, they get to their home deck. They got the weekend off coming up. You want to go into the bye with some momentum, a chance to rectify that, get a final tick, and then go put your feet up for a week. Saints have been down here for the last week and a bit in this in, the, in these conditions, and they go up to Brisbane. It, it, it does take it does take a bit of climatising. I think Brisbane for that reason at home. Yeah, they've been on the road for five of the past seven weeks. Uh, Chris Fagan's noted that, not making it an excuse. Lost to Hawthorne, lost to Fremantle. Just going into the bye, as you said, I, I feel they'll just regroup well enough to to get the job done in this game. But 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 close. It's really a big close. trip. Yeah, big trip from Perth. You? Oh, I think Brisbane. Yeah. I think yeah. I think Chris Fagan would have got stuck into his group this week for their the way they're defending, especially over the last three weeks. I think they'll sharpen up, and I think maybe you're right at the Gabba. You have to take Brisbane. The big one. Collingwood, Monday? Melbourne. Yeah. yeah, Collingwood, Melbourne. Without Stephen May. I'm still sticking with Melbourne. I, Melbourne I was pretty. I thought they'd beat Sydney last week. I thought they'd bounce back. Sydney were excellent. I'm going Melbourne. I think Melbourne are going to use this sort of little 
indiscretion with Melksham and May to sort of yep. bunker down and get the job done. Yeah, I'll be tipping Melbourne. I give the Pies a hope because regardless of where these teams, there's a few of these games a year, it doesn't matter where they are on the ladder historically mm. in – the Pies did beat the D's in this game last year, although it was up in Sydney. I think Melbourne will be winning on a day that's much bigger than football. So if you can, go along. Support, go buy yourself a beanie at Bunnings or Coles and whatnot because it is a great day and a great cause. D's for me well as well. Said. D's uh, for me. Very good. Hey, another great show, fellas. Thank you very much. Well done. Hey, this is Triple M Footy's Midweek Rub, of course, exclusive on the listener app. Don't forget you can listen to every game across the, the weekend starting Thursday night uh, with BT, Das, Daisy, you're doing that one ahead of... Richmond v Port Adelaide. Thanks for listening. We'll do it all again next week on Triple M Footy's Midweek Rub.